Uh, today, we continue to look at the John chapter 1 verse 7, number 13 part, along with the uh, 4 John chapter 5 verse 6. Uh, 1 7 John, this one, Johannes came into testimony, and then we are looking at the testimony so far 13 times. And then the, today's title is The Testimony of the God, that is, Jesus Christos. So, Jesus came through water in the water. So, we are the way and truth and life who exactly be one in Christos Jesus. So, we have to go through the same way. We have to possess the same truth. We have to possess the same life of God. As we know, we uh, look and then I'm preaching based upon the New Testament Greek and Old Testament Hebrew. So the Bible is the expression of the God's thought. It shows the God's way. It shows the God's truth. It shows the God's life. So the God desire to live with me forever, eternally. So in order to do that, we have to receive His knowledge. We have to Lead by the word of God. That is the God's intention and God's will. That's the only way God makes God. So here talking about the testimony of God and then Christos Jesus. Who is the son of the God? Then who is the son of God? Jesus, right? And then what is the meaning of Jesus? Jesus is the existence of salvation. Who is the existent? Who is able to show the God? And then salvation is the by providing the way, by giving the truth of God, by giving the life of God. Then we all participate as the joint heir, joint partner, as the son of the God. He wants to become us to be imitator, same as the Jesus. That's why when we go to the book of Revelation, it will show the new name, right? So all Christians' name has to become what? The Son of the God. Who are the Son of the God? Christ is the Son of God. Jesus is the, the meaning of the existence of salvation. And then Christos is the Hebrew, is the Messiah, which means anointed one. His job is the anointing. Doing and then providing the knowledge of God. That's why when we go to the Ephesians 4.13, we went there many times. It talking about the perfect man, isn't it? We all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Who are the Son of God? Here talking about Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Christos is the Jesus. Who showed the faith? Who showed the knowledge in order to become a son of the God? The perfect man have the same faith. The perfect man is the same knowledge. Who become one with Christos Jesus? About that, Apostle Paul is talking about the last era. That is the life-giving spirit. So that's why when we read the Bible, we have to read very, very carefully. And then Bible should not read as a story, like a story, right? Because we have to looking at the each word in detail. So, you know, I normally talk to the people, attention to detail, right? So when we read the Bible, the word of God is the God itself, God himself. So we have to read very carefully and we need to look at the each word in very, very detail. Not only do you are translate Bible, now we are at the looking at the Bible in the original text that called the New Testament written in Koine Greek, Old Testament written in Classic Hebrew. We have to be very, very detailed, right? That's why when we go to the, uh, the this is the testimony of God, we are looking at the 4 John chapter 5, verse 5, and today is the 6. We are going to look at the, as the subject say, 
Jesus came through water. Through water. But you know what? How English translate? Let's go to look at the John 5:5 5, 5 and 5:6. 5, First John 5:5. 5, 5. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believed that Jesus is the Son of God, right? And then this is he, verse 6, who came by water and blood. Look at the by water and blood in the Greek text. Right here. To elton di huda tos kai haimatos. So English translate New King James and King James by. Let's compare other English Bible. Before we do that, you see here dia, that proposition. 1 to 23, when we go look at the dictionary, 1 to 23, dia is what? Through. And then denoting the channel of an act. So I was talking through means what? My entire life, right? That's why when we go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, uh, verse 8, the Jesus is talking, I am the Alpha, Omega. Starting from the Alpha to finish as Omega, that is what process? Dia through process. Arche, beginning. And telos, ending processing. Once you're starting, you have to get the result. You have to arrive at the destination. That is your goal. And then protos, first, which is the first eram. Eskatos, that is the last eram. So that is the whole dia process. That's why in our subject today, through water. And then next time we are going to also look at the through blood. So water has to be processed through my what? Entire life. Alpha through omega. Beginning and that is a dia process. That dia process, once we go through, once Jesus went through the water, then he is what? In the water. You see here the water determiner, right? Determiner is the water, not any general water. The is the limitation and indication. The water, the water, okay, the water. So those are the water that we about to look at that. But before we look at that, those dia, but English translated as by water, right? That's why I compare all American English Bible. You see here, ASB by water and blood, NASB. By water and blood. RSB, by water and blood. NRSB, by water and blood. King James, by water and blood. New King James, by water and blood. NIV, by water and blood. Darby, by water and blood. YLT, through water and blood. This is the only one translated correctly in this verse. BBE, by water and by blood. Then what is the meaning of preposition by? I look at the Google, as you look at here on the screen, by is identifying the agent performing an action. That's why I translate by preposition as a dative case in case of noun. Because the by is the only one that shows the agent performing an action. Also, it indicating means of achieving something. That's why when you go to the uh, New Testament Hebrew, the famous one, chapter 11, you see here, by faith. That is the dative, right? If you look at the by faith, piste, noun, dative, feminine, singular, right? That's why English translator, who did correctly here in Hebrew chapter 11, by faith. Because faith is the one that means of achieving something. Because the faith of Christos Jesus accomplished me to get to the destination. Omega. Last. End, right? And then there is the agent. The faith is the agent. I can perform an action to become the son of the God. That's why here it says, by faith. And verse 4, by faith Abel afford, by faith Enoch, and then by faith Noah, and by faith Abraham, and then by faith he dwell, 
all those things is the dative form, which, is, which means by is the agent performing an action, and then means of achieving something. But here, it's not by 1 John chapter 5. This is he who came by water and blood. Wrong translation. Not by. It is not dative. It is the preposition dia. So the water has to go through my entire life from the alpha to the omega process. Also, you see here by water, next one. Not only by water. Look at the not only by water, but by water. Look at here. You see here? Uk and to shudati moron. Alen to shudati kai to haimati. It is in. In the world. In the world. In. Not by the world. So in English translator here, regardless, either the preposition in Greek, either in prepo uh, and preposition in, both of them is translated as by, isn't it? Which is the, which is the reader who make very detailed, who try to understand Bible, looking at each word in detail, they, they are lead us the blind guides. They are the blind guide. Because N is the in. In is the already inside, already become one. In the world, the world. That's why we have to very attention to detail to understand the Bible. That is the only reason. That's why we have to compare the translate Bible and the Greek Bible, which is the original text, and then we need to find out what is the difference. That way, we can understand more clearly, and then we are able to become a perfect man, not only possess the faith and the knowledge of the God, once we have the faith and the knowledge, we are living as the God's living. Our name becomes the Jesus, Jesus, who possesses the God's knowledge. That is the Christos. So as Jesus went through, he went through the water. We also went through the water. As he is in the water, we also in the water. So until the last sermon, we were looking at the water. So this one is the one came through water, through water. So Hebrew word water is always dual form, ma'im, ma'im. And then we well, we quickly looking at the Genesis 1, 6 through 7. When we look at that, there is a two different water, isn't it? That's why uh, we can go again, Genesis 1, 6 to 7. Uh, 6 says, God said, let there be permanent in the midst of the water, and let it divide water from the water. So I was fixing, I was correcting the wrong translation from the Bible, the, the uh, English Bible. And then the last part here, ben ma'im le ma'im, right? Mm -hmm. Understand water for water. Because there is two different water when we're coming to the verse 7, right? English did not translate here, ben ham ma'im aser me tahat, which is the understand the water which out of under. And then here, upen hamaim eser mear eser mear. So understand the water which from the above. So there is a water from above. There is a water from above. We have to understand for both water. That way, that's why Jesus came what? Through water, through water. Aleph, Tav in the Hebrew word, and then Alpha, Omega in the Greek word, beginning to the end processing is the water process, and then entire my water process, and we start from the water under, out of the water that is under. Then, by meeting the Christos Jesus, who is the second era, our Lord from heaven, then we are able to receive the water, the water from above. But entire process is the water process. 
So those are the one is talking about Genesis chapter 6 verse 7 and then today we move to the Jeremiah 10 13. Let's go to Jeremiah 10 13. Uh, start from 12. He has made the earth by his power. Again, you see here another you see the by, right? When we're looking at the uh, Hebrew text, you see the by, by his power. Bekoho, mm -hmm. right? Which is a kohu. Not by his power. Bet is not by. Preposition bet in the Hebrew is the in. In his power. In his power. So he has made earth in his power, within his power, in his power. He has established what in his wisdom, not the by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heaven in his discretion. When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the end of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasury. Because of the time, I can take more much time during our class. So I'm inviting everybody who's listening from my YouTube channel, sign up Star Wars Bible Academy uh, curriculum, those who study Greek and Hebrew. So this preaching is limited time, not enough to give you uh, for full information. But at this moment, your here says, when he uttered his voice, another wrong translation. Another, another, again and again and again. Okay, that's why I'm inviting everybody to join, uh, enroll our Star Wars Bible Academy class. There's no when he utter his voice. You see here, lekor. This is a preposition noun, masculine singular, genitive, which is a constructive form. For voice, for voice, not when his voice. For voice. Tito. You see, though, this is an infinity masculine third person singular. Natan, which is a give. To give him. So the voice is, Yehovah's voice himself is the one way, one way to give what? Give himself. How can you give your knowledge to others? It can be many different ways, isn't it? But in order to give him the knowledge, whether you need to write it down on the piece of paper, right? Or you can send something through email, right? Or you can open your mouth and then speak out. So that person can listen, right? The means of communication can be through the character or voice. Either or, right? But in this case, God speaking through the written document that is the New Testament and Old Testament. So to give him, why to give him? For voice. He wants us to possess his Jehovah's voice. That's why when we go to the Matthew chapter 4, you know, the word comes from the mouth of God. That's why whoever possess the mouth of God, we, we learn those things are grammar word in the Greek word, not the Logos word. Then they are the speaking out from their mouth and then fully manifest the content of the Faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, isn't it? Right? That's why if you possess the voice of voice of Him, voice of Jehovah, you are the one who possess the God's life. You are the one who show the way and the truth of God. Right? So for voice to give him many water in the heaven. In the heaven. So in the heaven, many waters existing. But then many here talking about multitude, but it is a lot of different crowd and then uh, a lot of confused word. Uh, let's go to look at the 1995 in the dictionary. Hebrew 1995. You see the noise, tumult, crop. So when you hear the voice of God, it is noisy to you. Okay. It is a tumor to you. It is a crowd to you. Let's go to look at the BDB. Murmur, roar, crowd. Right? Mm -hmm. And then they choose the abundance, which is a multitude. right? Mm -hmm. Here, multitude right there. right? Mm -hmm. 
But until you have a distinction, until you clearly understand the God, the voice of God still is what? Confused knowledge. Voice of God still hearing you is like a murmuring, murmuring. That exists in the heaven until we hear from the preacher who was sent by the Christos Jesus. And then he caused the vapor to ascend from the end of the earth. He made lightning for the rain, for the rain. So you look at the lightning, but it is not existing long time, isn't it? So some of them you are understanding. Some of them you do not understand it. So you understand in part. You prophesy in part. Your knowledge is in part. Where we say that? 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13, is it, right? Until the perfect is come. Until you hear the preacher who sent by the Christos Jesus. He brings the wind. English translate the wind. When you look at the wind, you see here, Ruach. Ruach. He brings the spirit out of his treasury. Where is his treasury? Where is the Yehovah God's treasury? Where is the location? Deep in your heart. Right? Where is his location based upon the tabernacle? The most holy place, right? Where is the location based upon the Genesis chapter 2? Eden, right? That's why water comes from the Eden. Water in the garden, right? And then it parted for riverhead, right? We were talking last class, last, uh, last Sunday sermon. So, his treasury, the most holy place, Eden. The place, God's Ruach, God's spirit is existing. So, then, then what is the Ruach and spirit? Oh, his voice is there. That's why when we go to the uh, John chapter 6, verse 63, Christos Jesus is talking about his utterance, right? 663, right? It is the spirit. It is the Ruach. Greek word is the Pneuma. Who gives life? The flesh profit nothing. The words, this is the neural noun. Words is the Krema. The words that I speak to you are spirit. So from the Yehovah God's treasury, the most holy place, Eden, the spirit comes up. Then that spirit is the what? The words comes up. Krema words comes up. Then Krema is the life. So spirit and life is the words that comes out the most holy place, Eden, and deepen your heart. That is not the bottomless pit anymore, right? Because you are locking up the bottomless pit by seventh and by hearing the seventh angel's trumpet, isn't it? So then you are able to possess the, the, the voice of the Jehovah. Then it is not any more murmur. It is not any more roar. It is sound and clear in the heaven, isn't it? Because two heaven becomes one heaven. That words we have to possess. That comes from the Yehovah's treasury. So then, what is the content existing in Yehovah's treasury? When we go to the uh, Colossians chapter 2, it talking about the uh, uh, verse 2, their heart may be encouraged, being knit together in love, attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of mystery of God. Then mystery has to be opened to possess the knowledge of the God. Then knowledge of the Father, knowledge of the Christ. In whom? In Christ are hidden all treasury of wisdom and knowledge. God's wisdom, God's knowledge exists where? God's treasuries. In God's treasuries, in your heart. That's why Jesus was talking, I will be in the heart of the earth. How long? Three days? Three nights, he will be in your heart. And then keep shining what? His wisdom and knowledge. That's why when we go to the uh, second Corinthians, chapter 4 is talking about that, right? The light of the gospel of glory of Christ. 
Christ is the image of God, should shine on them, right? So the glory of Christ, that is the light of gospel, that is the image of God, shining to where? Shining on them is what? Has shine in where? Your heart. That exists in your heart. But someone needs to come to let you know about that and open up your heart, isn't it? How can you open your heart? By opening your ear, right? By opening your eyes, right? When you open your ear, when you open your eyes, then your heart will be open. Then you are believe the word that comes from the mouth of God. Then you will possess the voice of the God, which is the mouth of God. That grammar word you are able to possess. So give the light of the knowledge. There is the knowledge and the wisdom of the glory of God in the faith of Jesus Christ. So until you are looking at the faith of Jesus Christ, your status is nothing but 2, 4 Corinthians chapter 13. I just mentioned, and then you know in part, we prophesy in part. Until you look at the face to face, when that which is perfect has come, perfect faith, perfect knowledge has come, in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, perfect man, I put away childish things, now I shall know just as I also am known. Because you are looking at the faith of Christos Jesus. So that's what he's talking about Jeremiah 10 13. Let's go to look at the Ezekiel 43 2. Start from um, afterward, he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces towards the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. When we're looking at the east, east is a Hebrew word is a kedem. It's not talking about the uh, direction. It is talking about the direction, but there is a spiritual meaning. The east is the meeting place. The strong number is the 6921. Let's go to look at the dictionary, 6921. You see here, east, east, wind, east, east, if from the what? 69.23, that is what? To meet. Come be in front. You are facing to the face of the Christos Jesus. By meeting. That's why meeting place is in the, located in the east on the tabernacle. Right? So the first gate is the east, the location. So you are coming to the east to meet the faith of Christos Jesus. That's starting what day? Among our seven-day process. That's starting on the fourth day, right? You are accessing to the east gate, right? His voice was like the sound of many waters. Same thing, right? But here, many is not different. Hamon was the, the, the crowd and the roar, right? Murmur, right? Here is the many, is the rabu. Rabu. Rabu is the many. Same thing, police in the Greek word, right? So, his voice is what? Many words. Many words. And the earth shone with his glory. We just look at that. The earth shone. The gospel of the knowledge of the God. The knowledge of the gospel of God, right? The faith of the Christos Jesus existing, they shine into my earth, right? By receiving what? The Jehovah's voice. That is what? Many words. So water is the voice. Voice is the word. That is in the written document that we are seeing the water from the Old Testament Hebrew, from the New Testament Greek. That water, the Jehovah's voice, Jehovah's grammar, the God's speaking, God's word has to go through, alpha through, omega. Beginning to the end, right? Let's go to the next one, Proverbs 18.4. The 
The words of man's mouth are the words. So water is what? Words. Words is the water. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. So the man is the one who put this what? Wisdom. Who are the wisdom? Christ, right? When we go to the 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, Christ is what? Wisdom of God. Christ is what? Power of God. And who is the perfect man? The perfect man's mouth, what is comes out? Life and spirit, the Krema word, right? So find the Krema word from the Christos Jesus mouth. Then we are able to possess the wisdom. That process has go through. Until we meet that perfect man, then we are not able to hear in the loud, loud and clear sound this man. That's why these things happen. When we go to the Amos 8.11 Behold the days are coming. What day are we talking? Christos Jesus has to be what? Born inside me on the sixth day, right? What is that means? The knowledge and wisdom has to be bring forth, manifest in my heart. That day is has to be coming. That day is called the today. Say the Lord God, I will send a feminine on the land. Not a feminine of bread, nor a thirst for water. So thirst for the hearing the word of God, right? But of hearing the word of the Lord. Until that time, they shall wander from sea to sea. Which is a sea to sea is what? Under the water or above the water? Under the water, right? And from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. So that's why the woman of Samaria, she is not able to find it until she met Christos Jesus. She's nothing but draw the water from where? Jacob's well, right? She's not able to find the water, which is an everlasting water, until she meet the Christos Jesus. That is talking about John chapter 4, verse 12 and 14. She was looking for the true water, living water, water of life, sea to sea. And then north to east, run to and fro. She went to the Presbyterian Church, she went to the Baptist Church, she went to the Methodist Church, she went to the Jehovah's Witness, she went to many different places to looking for the water of life. But she was not able to find it. She was the thirst. She was famine. Until when? Until that days are coming. Until she met the Christos. Until she hear from the man's mouth. That has to be happen. That's, that takes that takes the sixth day to seventh day in talking about the thousand years. Let's go to look at the second Peter 3 5. We went here before for this day willfully forget. Do not forget that right that by the word of God the heaven were of war and the earth standing out of water in the water. Out of water, in the water. By which that word then exists to perish, being flooded with water. But the heaven and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word. So the, through the water is what? Through the word, right? Same word, right? Preserved for fire until the day of judgment. So when we receive the fire, when we receive the word of Christos Jesus, because God's word is the Jehovah is the consuming fire. The Ishi, which is the Hebrew word adult man, Ishi is the fire. When you receive the water from above, that means you receive the fire. Then under the water, sea to sea, that water has to be what? It should be dried, right? You have to dry up. You have to unlearn. You know, she normally say, Oh, Pastor Kim, I'm unlearned and relearned. Are you really? Then make it dry. 100%. 
That way, you can receive the water from above. So that is the fire. Reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord, one day is as thousand years, as a thousand years as one day. Thousand is the first Hebrew alphabet word, Aleph. Aleph is the first era of my personal human nature. The one who drink the water from the Jacob's well, same as the woman of Samaria. Like a relearn or unlearn, learning. So dry out your knowledge. Dry out your word. Right? Zip it up your mouth in order to receive the God's mouth. That is what? Your personal human nature, thousand. And then year means Shana, which means transform. So your personal mouth transformed to become a God's mouth. Your personal knowledge transformed to become the God's knowledge. Your personal faith transformed to become a faith of the Son of God. That called the thousand year means here in the uh, second Peter chapter 3 then you are start to getting received the water from the heaven the last one Revelation 21 we went there before he showed me the pure river of life clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God of the Lamb there shall be no more curse but the throne of God of the Lamb shall be in it. His servant shall serve him. They shall see his faith, right? Face to face, right? His name shall be on their forehead. Then your name is what? Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus' name will be on your forehead, okay? Then Smith become Jesus. Macfadden become Jesus. Ortiz become Jesus. June King become Jesus. We are the one who possess the way. We are the one who possess the truth of God. We are the one who possess the life of God. That is, I am the way and the truth and life. We become one testimony of the God. We are all become one as the son of the God, perfect man. That is a true process. In the water means in the water of life. Next Sunday sermon, we are going to look at the blood. 